Hi everyone, today we're going to tackle the thorny subject of leaks from radiator valves. Um, now a few of you have been contacting me about this problem and what they can do about it. Now I have already got a video up there already on um, a radiator valve and what to do if you have a leak from the gland. And that's when it's under the cap like this. Um, if you've got an ordinary cap like that, and it, it'll probably be underneath there. It'll be running down like that. Um, I've got a video on that already. It'll look like it's coming from the nut, but just trace it back. If it's coming from the packing gland, it will run down. And you've just got to pull this off and undo that and pack it with some PTFE, which I've got on there already. Just undo the, the packing gland there, like so. Uh, PTFE, a few, few rounds of PTFE in there, prod it back down. Uh, and do this back up and the job's a good one, all right? So that's a simple uh, one. But what I've been getting lately is, is problems not with that leaking, but with either this nut leaking before it goes in the radiator or the pipe that goes in the bottom. Um, and this is a different matter altogether. All right, so I'm gonna cover the two types of main valves. Um, one is, is this type, which is the Conex type. It involves um, a threaded part that goes in the radiator there and a nut and cone on this part. Well, I call it a nut and cone. It's a nut and olive, as you can see there. All right, and they just slide on there. The olive goes on there, and it goes into the valve. Now, the very first thing, if you've got a leak coming from uh, a nut like this, we deal with the one from the radiator. So here's our radiator, and this nut's dripping. First thing to try, and I always recommend this first before doing anything, is just to see whether it will nip up a little bit. And that means with a spanner like this, and just giving it a tiny time. Now what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take you to a radiator now, uh, a valve like this, uh, and show you what you mustn't do, and what you must do when you are gonna give it a little nip up like this. So I'm gonna take you to that now. All right, and so here's our radiator valve, and um, we're, we're say we've got a drip off of this nut here at the moment, off this union here. All right, now it's very well worth trying to tighten that up a little bit, and a lot of times it will stop it straight away. Not all the time, if it makes it slightly worse, then stop altogether and don't attempt to tighten it anymore. Um, so that's a very important thing. If it makes it worse at all, then do not try to do it anymore because the olive might be on the end of the thread. We don't want it dropping off. But a lot of times it only needs a nip up, and it's worth trying that first. But as I say, if it makes it worse, do stop immediately because it may be that the olive is on the end of the pipe thread there. So get your two spanners, now this is very important. Do not try, you'll just tighten this up on its own. Now if it's this way round, the spanner's gotta go down like this, okay, in this direction, down like that. If it's the other way round, on the other end, the spanner will need to go up like that. Okay, so if we're on the right end end, like we are now, the spanner needs to go down. But do not try to just turn that down because if you do, you could bend this valve and break the seal here on the pipe. So under no circumstances, just try and tighten that up like that. You do need another tool. I mean, I use these plumber's footprints, but if you've got another tool, something that you can hold against, like so, you must be able to get the valve like that. Now this allows me to hold back on the valve while I tighten it up. So I can give that a nip without spinning that pipe and breaking that seal there, this is very important. Okay, just see if we can get a nip on it, and as I say, it should go down like so, like that. And, and it'll, it'll just go a fraction of a turn, and that may well be enough to stop the leak. All right, and that's just a, a very important tip. If it's not, um, and it doesn't stop it, then we've got to undo this and repair it. And I'll show you it easier on the table, probably really, than um, trying to do this one for real. So, basically, it's a matter, obviously, of turning this radiator off, turn the valve, turn it right down off, turn the other end off for the radiator. It doesn't matter whether it's a thermostatic valve or an ordinary valve. Just shut it off. Even if it's a lock shield valve, take the, the cap off and just turn it down with pliers so that both ends of the radiator are off. Okay, then we're free then to loosen it. Once again, you need something to hold against and loosen the nut off the other way. Once it comes loose, it will start to drip. Have a container under here to catch the water, okay? Because it, what we're going to do now is empty the radiator out. You won't get any more water than the radiator that's full. So, to make it start running, you're going to need to open the air cock. I'll show you the air cock at the top of the radiator. All right, that's our little piece there. 
there it is, I've got it in last. <laughs> Undo the air valve, let the air in, um, and then it will start to run um, at that joint there. It will start to, to, start to pour out. Uh, and then let it go into a little receptacle, something underneath, anything you've got, and just keep tipping it out until it stops. And that's it. Right, so here's our radiator valve. All right, we're going to pretend it's screwed in the radiator here. All right, and that's the radiator. Um, once you've undone this nut and all the water's out, um, as long as both ends of the radiator are off, you should be okay. Um, what you'll be presented with is, is this. Um, I'll take the cap off that, and you'll see that it's got an olive inside. I'll take it right off. That's what you've actually got um, on the actual part of the valve. So if you think about it, that's all you've got. If that olive is very near the end there, it's very advisable to get this off. Okay, put it right off and put a new olive on all together. All right, if it's right on the end of that thread, renew it. If it's on as normal and it's quite right back like that, and the olive is, is right back into the nut, that's the proper place for it to be, but that's been leaking, then an easy answer to it is quite simply a bit of PTFE tape like this. All right, pull off about six inches or so and just snap it like so, and, and just wrap it around, around there like so. All right, like so. Okay, that should take up any of the gaps with the olive that's probably been compressed. And Toto's decided he'll start barking right this minute. Good on him. Okay, and then put it back in there like so and do the nut up. All right. Do it up nice and tight and do it as I've showed you with the grips and the spanner uh, and that should do you. Now, also, if you find that the leak's been coming down the side of the radiator there, then you can still do it easily by undoing that nut still. Put your spanner on here, the radiator, and undo the entire thing. This will come out completely out the end of the radiator like so. Once again, once you've got it out, PTFE tape, pull it out, pull a bit of it out like so, and put it around the thread of this, have it like that. Can put a bit more than that on. I should I've only put a little bit on and screw that back into the radiator, all right. Uh, and you should find it does the job for you. That's very rare, it leaks from that end, okay. It's very, very rare. Usually, it's there, and that will cure your problem. Do it up, but don't forget, as I've said, spanner footprints to hold against, you know, the routine. All right, and up like so, so that, that holds against. You can see that spanner holding against it while I do it up. All right, that's all you've got to remember. There's a thermostatic rad valve. The top's just been taken off of it. All right, be exactly the same routine. So that is the same for thermostatic valve. And they're usually always that type of nut arrangement. Okay, so that covers that one. Um, now we're going to move to the other type of, of, of radiator nut, which is a rather large one, which I'll show you again. This is fairly easy to do. Well, there we have, um, that's, that's one of the really large nut valves that you can get, where you have a big nut on here, all right, so those little tiny ones, and these act on, on a flange. It's just a flange joint inside where one pulls into the other. And these are actually very easy to do again. Just do as I've showed you before on the other valve, drain it down again, uh, undo this, and there'll be a little flange in there, um, and you can simply just put some boss white on it and uh, do it back up again. And normally that does cure the problem. Well, one other thing with these um, large nut valves, if you do have to take the threaded part out at the back of the radiator here, I'm afraid you do need a special tool to get it out. Um, most of the time there's not a thread or anything on there to grab a spanner with, um, and you'll need a tool. Uh, and this is the tool, it's a special radiator remove tool. This is a bit old and rusty, been in my garage for years, but um, it still works. Uh, and that's the only tool that will get in there and, and undo it, take it out if the threaded part's leaking bit more hassle I know but there you are. So there's a very kind of rough drawing of the, the flange what I'm talking about there. Um, it basically just pulls a, a flange together um, so all you need is a bit of something like plumber's blue really. Undo it, make sure it's perfectly dry, all the water's out of it, then you can put some plumber's blue around that flange there and just do that nap back up and normally uh, that does do the job for you. Okay, so some of you are saying, well that's fine, but I haven't got a leak from there. Um, I've actually got a leak from this pipe that goes into the bottom of the radiator. So what do I do now? Um, because obviously it's going to be live. Um, this is a problem one again. Um, 
once again it's worth trying to tighten it up just a fraction and also once again as I said before if it looks like the leak's getting worse do not do it anymore because the olive might be on the end of the pipe and you could just pop it off and then you would have a nasty flood on your hands so if it gets worse at all just do it very gingerly stop okay but usually nine times out of ten it can stop the leak again spanner on this nut all right get the spanner on there and as i showed you before don't forget you need to hold it against with that one do not try to do it without holding against otherwise you'll you'll pop the joint on the radiator although it is very easier to do that one because if you've got the big nut especially it holds steady anyway but still best to hold against try to miss the threads all right don't do it on the thread miss the threads whatever you do we don't want to damage them and get your spanner on and just see if you can tighten it a bit like so just give it a gingerly tighten up and you could just that would often be enough to stop it okay but that that's the same with the other union the big flange union again you can just give it a tip and it just may be enough to stop it for you but if not what have we got to do okay you can turn one end of the radiator off um, but even if you turn this end off um, it's not going to stop water from coming up either the flow or the return that that's connected to but there's a couple of ways um, that, that could be done obviously the the first one is to drain everything out you know I mean it's just the safest way drain everything off but obviously uh, it's going to take you a long time you've got to drain it all off you could get airlocks and all sorts of things and the system might not run after us properly there's lots of problems with draining it all off now you can also get a freezer kit if you've got enough copper pipe coming out of here you could put a freezer kit on there shut the other end of the radiator valve off so it's off that end with a freezer kit here and then that would stop any water from there and you could safely undo it and, and do the joint um, but there is another way it's, it's kind of a risky way but if there's two of you um, there's a possibility you could get by doing this and let me show you on the drawing okay so there's that there's our rad and we're, we're saying it's leaking down this union here um, and it's just make sure as well it's not the packing gland and it's running down from there. Do check that first. Just use uh, toilet paper or any anything Kleenex towels just to dry it completely. Make sure it's not coming under the cap and the packing gland like I showed you earlier. If it's not, and it's definitely coming from this nut, then there is another way to say, and that is to, if you can get a friend to hold this pipe for you with their hand, round it like so, gripped tightly around that pipe and hold it up into the joint and then you undo this nut or get someone to undo the nut it will start to leak obviously because it's live but if you've got this valve off for a start which will stop some of it coming through the radiator okay just turn that off um, all you've got is one side that's live it's still plenty you don't worry because if you're downstairs rad is the one there is still pressure there Get a towel and loads of cloths on the bottom of this pipe underneath to mop anything up because there will be some water there still. Okay, undo this nut. Okay, now what you're going to get is the same as before, but if you've got someone holding it there, once the nut is undone, you can do as I showed you before for the other nut, and that is just to put um, some PTFE round there around the front there, exactly as I showed you with the union that went there, do it the same under there, and then do it back up again, and you should stop it. But I'm afraid sometimes there's more water than you can deal with, and it won't be possible. It's best just to do it back up and drain it out. But if there's not, and you've got a friend holding that pipe in nice and tight, so you can get that nut down, and then get a bit of PTFE tape around there, or some plumber's hemp, or maybe even just some Boss Blue. I've known just Boss Blue around it to cure it and stop it, all right? Get it round there. There will be water there. So that's what makes it hard for it to stick and to get the boss blue or, or, the, or the plumbers, you know, tape to stick. But if you can get it round there, um, it will indeed stop it once you've done it back up. All right, so that's a little trick um, if you've got a nut leaking on the bottom there and you don't want to drain it all out. And that really is, is the only way, unless you put, a, say, a freezer kit on here, which you can get, um, uh, and put a freezer kit on this pipe, turn the valve off there, then obviously you can pull that out and do what you want with it, put a new olive on if you'd rather, uh, and make sure it's a proper job. All right, so that's it. Um, so it was just a little query that I've had on um, uh, two or three of you um, that have been trying to do a rad leak, and it's uh, not been... Um, it's not been the radiator, it's not been uh, the packing gland, it's been one of those two nuts that I've just showed you on the rad valve. Sorry it's not as easy as it 
may be where it's the packing gland, but never mind. Plumbing never is, is it? <laughs> it's always been a right nasty piece of thing, but I'm just trying to help you maybe try and do these things yourself rather than paying out um, whatever it would cost you for a plumber to come in, because I'm pretty sure they would probably drain the system uh, just to make it a bigger job anyway and a safer job for them in case it went wrong. Um, so it's not really uh, having a go at them. Uh, because they'll probably err on the safe side and drain it all out but that does mean they can make a nice big job of it and charge you quite a lot of money uh, just to change that in fact they'll probably say you need new radiator valve and just change the whole thing um, which obviously uh, if you do have to drain it all out then I would contemplate um, changing the whole valve anyway just for safe measure all right so that's that's about it that's the end of it they're like totally spotted someone at the door right time for me to go <laughs> toe toe See you again. Derrick and 33, all my videos. Bye-bye. Mm. Toto. Mm.